My name is Anna Canato. I'm from the European Investment Bank, and uh, I am the head of division for education and public research at the European Investment Bank. I believe that some of you might be asking yourself what a public investment bank is doing, speaking at a conference about the future of education, or at least this is a question that I get quite often when I come to conferences and workshops about education. And uh, the straightforward and simple answer is that the simple answer is that we do really care a lot about education. We think that is it is a very good investment, both for society and for the economy, and we still think it might be beneficial for people in the sector to spell how people that look at what's happening from a different perspective, how we see the evolution of education and how we perceive it from our point of view as financiers and investors. My specific role in the EIB is to lead the team of people who do the appraisals from the technical and the uh, engineering side of the projects that we finance in education and in public research all over the world. Um, so we are not bankers, my team and I, we are not bankers from the strictly sense of the word. We come from different experiences in education and we try to really to see how the sector is evolving and what we can learn of the investment projects that we see happening all over the world. We are a public non-profit investment bank. We are aligned with the European policies and the money that we lend is important to say uh, we don't lend European funds, we don't give grants. Uh, what we propose are loans from our own resources that we raise from capital markets and that we lend to country, regions, institutions, public and private institutions who, who propose investments that are in line, above all, that are in line globally, aligned globally with European directives and European policies and that are investment projects. And I'm aware that our greatest reputation as an institution comes from investment in infrastructure. You might have heard the AIB for the financing of roads, for the financing of large energy installation or other type of infrastructure. Uh, but yet, when you really think about it, what is education if not the biggest infrastructure, infrastructure that really allows for competitiveness and innovation? What can a country, what can a society really do if you don't have a population who is educated and can be productive but also be knowledgeable and be wise about how the world is evolving? This is the background and the spirit with which EIB had started its investment in education since in year 2000. Since that, since that time, we have lent 45 well, I think I'll just do it like that. Okay. Since the since year 2000, we have lent 45 billion euros to education projects. The, that is an average of 2.2 billion per year. And when you see that number, the largest majority, like 95%, has been lent in Europe or in other accession, in accession countries. In Serbia, we are very proud to have started the collaboration with the country about 10 years ago, and uh, we have supported, and uh, we are we have supported, and we are still supporting projects in primary, secondary education, higher education, and also in public research. Um, in uh, what we are doing, what we have been doing in primary and secondary education has enabled the renovation and the construction of about 280 schools today. Something that we are very proud, and in hearing the prime minister this morning talking about the importance of education and the, the interest of renewing education even and even more. This is something that is really important for us because it's really aligned with how we see the relevance of the sector in itself. So it's probably not very well known, but we are one of the two biggest lenders in the education space together with the World Bank. And uh, we co-finance investment from pre-primary to higher education and uh, public research or research laboratories, scientific park. It's important to say that as an institution, we don't do business development. We don't go to a country to say what they should be doing. What we want, what we do is look at the 
investment projects that are already present in a given space and then offer our support also to structure and implement the project in a way that can lead to the greatest impact that as financiers we can help having. So in uh, looking at that, sorry for the introduction about the institution, but in my experience this is often not well known about what we do, so I thought it was useful to share with you. Um, how do we see the education world? How do we see it changing? Our investment surveys say that lack of skills is currently the biggest obstacle to innovation. And since we have started this survey a couple of years ago, this is a very striking result that really holds true in almost all European, well, in all European countries. When you ask, when we ask our investors, what is holding you back to invest more? What why are you not doing more? The result is always that there is a lack of people with the right skills. And uh, as here, as we have also heard in the presentation before, what we see is that this lack of skills are not just professional skills. They are not just how to do a specific job. Some of these skills are things that are more related to inter interdisciplinary skills, to how to work together how to work with multicultural people, which are skills that really should be learned. We hear our experts tell us that should be learned much earlier in, a, in education, in primary and secondary school. So we really see that there are a lot of challenges that the education sector face, challenges that maybe are not the usual challenges. And that's what I'm hearing for many, from many of the presentation that I've listened to today, that the education sector is facing some challenges and also some opportunities that are very, very different from, or they are significantly different from what they have been facing before. And these challenges might need responses, answers, uh, innovative initiatives that are different from what has been doing in the past. So in face of that, what is that we know about the resources? What is that we know about how many resources are used in, in education. Um, when we look at the resources of the sector, actually what we hear, there are many investment studies, and they, but I, I like to cite something that was told us by one of a large European country, which I mean, just tell us, we do have resources in education for the investments, but only to cover what is absolutely necessary and urgent. There are no investment resources for what is more, less than immediately urgent. An important investment study that was developed by the Euro Com European Commission tried to estimate the investment needs in the education world, so going from primary to higher education, and they estimated it at 15 billion euro per year or across all Europe. This was a this was a result that was based under the assumption that we could progress with a business as usual scenario. So with no transformation, with no innovation, with no radical changes on how education happens. And we all know again, if I'm hearing the conversation that is, uh, that is going in this room, that is it not really what, our, what education needs, that probably the needs are larger and more substantial. The key question then becomes why education does not have the amount of resources that they should, that are needed in the sector. And probably that is, there is not a single uh, very good answer, at least in our experience to that. Uh, what we see is that education, we like to say it in this way, education needs patient money. Education, fortunately and unfortunately, is an investment that needs a lot of time to realize impact. If you want it, you start, if you change the way a primary school children is learning today, you will most likely be able to measure the real result in 25 years' time. You don't really win elections with this type of promises, why it is much more likely to lose elections with this type of promises. And that's why we think, at least as a public financier, we think it's very important to keep talking about the support that education needs because it's something that really needs time to develop and time to produce result. So when we invest in education, and this is our perspective on the sector, we do it for three main reasons. 
different reasons. First, because we think that this is a very good investment for the innovativeness from the competitiveness for the cohesion of a country and for reducing the inequalities in the countries. And whichever country we talk about, this is also very good for Europe at all, in general. The second reason is, is, the reason is that we know from studies that improving educational infrastructure is something that is useful for educational outcome. At least, usually, it does not harm educational outcome, while hopefully, well, surely, improving and helping the planet as we make more climate resilience infrastructure. But the third reason, and uh, something that is deeply important for us, is that we hope that every time that we finance an education project, uh, this is something that can help the institution, can help the sectoral expert, can help the, the school administrator to really bring in changes in how they are developing innovation. Um, the way in which we support innovation projects is by supporting education infrastructure, equipment, but also teacher trainings, teacher training. And in, uh, more and more we believe that this is really the area we should be looking to, for. That we really hope that when there is an investment in a, um, when there is, sorry, when there is an investment, where is my slide? Yes. Uh, when we are supporting school reorganization, where we are helping any country to perhaps to be, increase the number of schools or reduce the number of schools in light of demographic needs, these can really be used by promoters, by sectoral experts, also as an opportunity to uh, bring in pedagogical changes, to bring in, bring in new approaches to teaching, and to increase the involvement of, t of teachers and other people that are impacted by the project. And this is where we, our investors, we also see our role as sometimes we can mobilize other funds related to the commission or related to technical assistance to really try to shape the project that we bring forward. I had titled my intervention uh, Effective Learning Environments, and although I reshaped it a little bit after hearing some conversations um, today, and I think that for us as investors, we often ask ourselves whether if there is really a best way in which a new school can be designed, is there a best way in which a new learning environment can be designed? And I mean, I'm curious personally if there is any evidence of that here. I think I am in the room where I might have people who have more evidence and experience. Um, but from, our, from what we have seen so far in different countries, we don't see a best way that is valid across all countries. What we see, what we see though, is um, possibly a good way to structure an education innovation project that is by making sure that there is a vision and a strategy, and this is something, and, uh, and to align this with what the projects need to achieve. So to make sure that there is an education program, an education strategy behind what country, a region, a municipality wants to achieve. That there is a good involvement of school actors at the various stage of the process. This is something that, again, in our experience following education projects across all Europe, this is something that is going, we know is going to improve the way in which the project is put in place. And last but not least, to really provide support to teachers in terms of training, in terms of mentoring, in terms of continuous support. The last studies from the, uh, from the European Commission, the annual monitoring tool of the Commission, really points at the needs of teachers in Europe, how they can be, how they really need to be supported in this type of transformation. Because uh, when we talk about digital training, when we talk about multicultural classroom, these can, that certainly can be impacted by the use of equipment and by new infrastructure, but the equipment infrastructure alone will not be able to bring impact unless the people is involved. So I think our call in this, in this conference is on the one way to uh, be ambitious in investments in education, not just because we can sponsor it, but because we really think that is, and there is evidence that this is something that Europe 
in general, in Europe, well, our focus is Europe, but the entire world needs. And second, not to forget that as investors, we can also provide a role in terms of sponsoring the project and making sure, thank you, that the project is carried out in a way that will, support, will be supported over the years and also to use us as monitoring tools of what is happening in the project and whether the project is, um, is reaching its impact. Um, I took with me a couple of examples that's to show you typically classical examples of what the bank is doing and has been doing in the last years. Um, I will not go in details, but if you go on our website, you will have all the examples and I'm surely available to explain. For example, this is a project we did uh, in France. Saint-Saint-Denis is the poorest region of uh, France, although it's on the outskirts of Paris. And there we really, we supported the renovation and reconstruction of a number of secondary schools which had behind a strong vision of how they wanted to change pedagogy in the secondary, uh, in the secondary level of education. So we, uh, and we see as the project progressed that this is something that really the infrastructure were useful to enable changes that were transforming the overall environment while the school take place. Um, this is not very different from what, for example, we will be doing in Montenegro, which is something that we is a project that we just signed recently about renovation of kindergartens and primary schools in Montenegro. A second example is more li is with higher education, and this is uh, this is an example of the University of Latvia, where again we support. This was the first project we did in Latvia, and we helped the national. Uh, public university to restructure their structure, their building, and find a way, find a way to put together and improve the way in which researchers were interacting by putting them in the same buildings, by building new laboratories, and by enabling an overall reconstruction of the country. And we have many projects like this across Europe, including uh, some of them also in Serbia. Thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>